You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring the scripture and all things related to it. New episodes are released daily. For more information, check out glossahouse.com and subscribe to our channels on Spotify and YouTube. Welcome and enjoy. Hello, friends, and welcome to Proof Text. I am Michael Halcom, and this is a Fallacy of the Week episode. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I got an interesting one for you. Uh, this one I have seen floating around on social media, especially on Facebook. And man, it's it's pretty disturbing. Um, so I want to share this with you. And uh, I think what we'll do is just uh, watch it one time, maybe all the way through, and then maybe watch it again and just break it down. Because this is kind of hard, really, to wrap your mind around how crazy this is. Uh, it's, it's almost unbelievable. You almost uh, have to think somebody's just acting. A friend of mine called it a cosplaying, right? Um, so uh, let's see. Here we go. Um, I need to restart this and let's see if we can get this going. All right. Keep away from the Bible. So let's see. The thing Let that go back. Let says, keep away from the Bible. The living Christ says, these writings you have put together into one book, the Bible, are a historical account of various events and people's thoughts about them. Such writings should not be regarded as accurate always or right, and rarely God's word. There's a lot wrong with them. Christians have made the Bible into a weapon with which to injure people. God has no need to communicate through an ancient book. God speaks today. Good people, they listen and they can hear my voice. So put the Bible down, my friends, and listen to all those shining with light and overflowing with love from every faith and nation and philosophy, for they speak God's word. All right. Uh, yeah. So, wow. Um, so you see that he's got the Black Lives Matter emblem on the the LGBT emblem, also wearing a cross emblem and the uh, the uh, collar and the pink shirt there um, with some uh, religious symbols behind him. This is crazy. Um, and there's so this thing is nothing but logical fallacies. There is there's no. Like, there's nothing in here that's not a logical fallacy. Like, every phrase and sentence is essentially a logical fallacy uh, or a theological fallacy of some sort. Really, this is crazy. So, what we're going to do is just watch it again. And um, as we do that, what, what I uh, want to do is I just want to point out some of these fallacies. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's do that. Uh, you're going to see all kinds of things here, but let's let's just start. Christ says, keep away from the Bible. Okay, uh, well, he sounds like a robot at first. It's just weird. Christ says, keep away from the Bible. Oh, it's just a really weird thing. Uh, I'm not trying to add hom there, which is a fallacy, but man, it's just kind of weird. A little bit creepy. Um, anyways, uh, so the whole rhetorical thing, like the garb, the attire, kind of sets the stage. It frames everything. But he opens up by saying, Christ says, keep away from the Bible. Um, first of all, that statement in and of itself has got a number of fallacies. The first one uh, is that he's doing like a, an appeal to authority, but it's really um, putting words in that authority's mouth that's the problem. So he's appealing to Christ to say that Christ said something. So he's appealing to authority falsely, first fallacy. and. Uh, then he's putting words in Jesus's mouth, in Christ's mouth, that Christ never said, namely, keep away from the Bible. Reminder, we didn't have the Bible when Christ was alive. We had an Old Testament, uh, but we didn't have the Bible. He says, we know it. And Christ never said, keep away from that. He was quoting it all the time. He was in the temple studying it. Um, he never said, keep away from it. So we have an appeal to a authority falsely and that's followed up these two often work together when you have a, a false appeal to authority you will often find the person uh then putting words in the authority's mouth um and so those are two uh fallacies right out of the gate um and the attire <laughs> is the the third 
uh, rhetorical fallacy because attire, right? It sets context, does speak, even though it's not physical words. So there's three fallacies right there out of the gate. Um, Christ says, keep away from the Bible. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is just ridiculous. Uh, so let's, <laughs> let's, uh, keep going and we'll watch a little more. We've got three fallacies there. The living Christ says. All right. The living Christ says. Now that is a slick rhetorical move. You got to be really keen to pick up on that, right? So he's saying Christ says keep away from the Bible. And then he adds the living Christ. So actually what he's doing is he's pitting um, really um, Christ as we kind of find him in the scriptures with this sort of living Christ. In other words, a historical Jesus versus the living Christ. So this this is a historical Jesus theological issue that goes back uh, decades or centuries, right? And where, but especially in modern times, people like uh, John Cross and others, um, they have done things like pit the the Paul of faith against the Paul of history, and the same thing with Jesus and uh, the the Jesus of history versus the the Christ of faith. He's making that move there, and it's really subtle. And what he's saying is essentially that. Christ is alive today, so we don't need to listen to the historical Jesus in the Bible. Because Christ is living and he speaks, and so he's the one that says, uh, I guess it's this living Christ, not the Christ of the Bible, that says, keep away from it. Which would sort of negate uh, the, the leading fallacies that I just pointed out. But this is a fallacy all in its own. You actually can't force that dichotomy of the historical Jesus versus the Christ of faith. It's ridiculous. Um, that comes in the wake of sort of the first historical Jesus studies and the first quest for the historical Jesus, second quest, so on and so forth. Let's keep listening. These writings you have put together into one. Oh, by the way, that's a, it's a false dichotomy. Um, I wanted to say it's a fallacy to pit the Jesus of Scripture versus the Christ of faith. Um, so he continues. One book, Bible. These writings um, ha have been put into one book, the Bible, he says. Um, and so, how does he say? He said, these writings you have put together into one book, the Bible, are historical accounts, he's going to say, of people, of, of various events and people's thoughts about them. So, let's keep listening. Are a historical account of various events and people's thoughts about them. Now, listen, this is important for realizing what's about to come. Um, so, notice that he's, he's saying these are historical Again, he's situating the past, making them kind of irrelevant. But these are um, people's people's perspectives on events from back in history. All right. Now, what he's going to do is, in the same way that he sort of denigrates the the Jesus of history, he's going to denigrate the people of history. And in a move of bold arrogance, uh, he is going to make it as if um, we moderns right, have a new Jesus speaking to us, a different, a Jesus that is different than them, a, a better Jesus who knows better, who affirms things like, affirms things like BLM and, and uh, LGBTQ and so on. Let's keep listening. Such writing should not be regarded as accurate always or right. All right, so he's saying the, the Bible these writings should not be regarded as accurate always, so no inerrancy there, or right. Wow. Um, so we have a, a, a denigration of the scriptures here, too, um, that these ancient people wrote. So we don't, it's, it's back there in history, so it's not really relevant for us. It's not right. Yeah. And rarely, God's word. There's a... we, Christians shouldn't even regard the scriptures, the Bible, as God's word. Maybe rarely, but it's certainly not God's word. Why? Because it's not Jesus speaking to us today. This modern new Jesus for us. This Christ of faith that he's invented. A lot wrong with them. There's a lot wrong with the scriptures, the Bible. Christian. And, and give us proof, right? He states this without giving us any evidence, any proof, any examples. He's just saying it. Christians have made the Bible into a weapon with which to injure people. Christians have made the Bible into a weapon with which to injure people. 
Well, maybe some people have, but not all. This is a hasty generalization. Um, maybe a few Christians have done that, but you can't speak for all Christians. I haven't done that. I don't do that. Um, I'm trying to handle the Bible as responsibly as possible and speak the truth that it speaks. Um, in fact, you could also say that um, a good number of non-Christians have weaponized the Bible. Hmm. Um, yeah, let's God has no communicate through an ancient book. God has no need. How does he know what God needs? How does he know God's needs? God has no need to communicate through an ancient book. Again, he's denigrating, denigrating history. So while he is trying to be open and inclusive of all these people today, notice that he's denigrating the people of history and not being open and inclusive to them. God speaks today. Good people. God speaks today. And then he's, he's going to, he doesn't say it, but he's, a, he's going to allude to John 10, 27 here. And when he does, he's actually going to misquote it. Um, John 10, 27, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them because, and they follow me. My sheep, my sheep, Jesus is saying, hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now. Listen. He translates it to good people, just all, all good people. Good people, they listen. And they can hear my voice. Good people, they listen and they can hear my voice. That's the word. He, again, he puts words in Jesus' mouth. Totally rips this verse out of context. So if we don't need to, if he was just saying, right, we don't need to really uh, trust the scriptures, the Bible, then why is he quoting what Jesus says in it? Well. Or misquoting. Why is he appealing to it at all? Fallacy. Right? It's a fallacy. Let's keep going. So put the Bible down, my friends. Put the Bible down, my friends. The one I just misquoted. <laughs> it's so stupid. This is so stupid, this, this whole statement. And listen to all those shining with light. And Put the Bible down. Don't listen to the ancient people. Now listen to the people today who are shining with light. All those shining with light. Because the ancient people evidently couldn't shine with light. Overflowing with love. And listen to those today who are overflowing with love. Right? Because ancient people couldn't overflow with love. From every faith. And listen to people from every faith. Nation and philosophy. Nation and... Listen to people from every faith, nation and philosophy. Uh, not not the Bible, not the people who wrote this ancient text, but today, people from every uh, faith and philosophy and nation. For they speak God's word. For they speak God's word, not the Bible. God's God's word has to to be something today, right? Um, not the Bible. Boy, there's so much rhetorical slight of hand taking place here. It can be difficult to pick up on. Um, so we have, uh, I, I've pinpointed a number of fallacies already, but we also have a straw man fallacy. I didn't, I didn't say anything about that one. Um, because this statement, uh, what it does is it actually um, misrepresents Christians' use of the Bible by suggesting that they, you only use it as a weapon to injure people. And he totally ignores the fact that Christians actually um, use it to, you know, seek spiritual guidance and moral and ethical teachings and so on and so forth, right? Um, so this is a straw man fallacy. He's setting up an argument, um, a fake argument, knocking it down, making himself look like the victor. Um, again, I, I, I mentioned the, the false appeal to authority. Um, or the appeal to false authority, the way you want to say that, this fake Jesus he's made up and puts words in his mouth and misquotes, right? The real Jesus um, is a parody of the real Jesus. Uh, this made up Christ of faith, this living Christ that he's talking about. Um, this is an appeal to emotion here as well. And remember, appeal to emotion isn't always bad. It can be an effective and good rhetorical uh, technique for persuasion, but when it becomes manipulative, that's when it's fallacious. And so the statement, right, it's using all kinds of emotionally charged language, such as 
Christians have made the Bible into a weapon. Well, nobody wants to be on the side, right, of people who have made the scripture into a weapon, right? It evokes this emotional uh, negative reaction towards the Bible and towards Christians. Um, like, oh, if you, you don't adopt this dog here, it's going to be lonely and sad, right? So that's a rhetorical sleight of hand. It's, it's an appeal to emotion. Um, there's also a false dilemma fallacy here, the either or. Um, you know, he's suggesting that you you either uh, listen to the ancient book that's irrelevant or the living Christ. You either listen to the ancient people who we exclude or you listen to people of today, of every nation and faith and philosophy. Um, it's an either or, right? And uh, it ignores the possibility that we can actually listen to the Jesus of Scripture and listen to Scripture, the people who wrote Scripture, um, and also engage with people today. They don't have to be against each other. It's stupid. Um, there's equivocation all throughout here. Um, or the fallacy of ambiguity, the fallacy of equivocation, same thing, right? It's using language to conceal the truth or language to mislead, right? And so this statement, for example, uses God's word ambiguously. Um, it uses living Christ or just Christ ambiguously. Um, it, and at first, like at the start, it's suggesting the Bible rarely contains God's word. And later it suggests that people from all faiths and pro, uh, philosophies can speak God's word. It's ridiculous. Um, so this is a rhetorical, again, a rhetorical maneuver um, that is the fallacy of ambiguity or equivocation. Um, yeah, so what about, uh, you also have some theological fallacies. Um, you have total misrepresentation of Christ. I've touched on that. Attributes words to Christ that aren't found in any Orthodox Christian scripture. Um, and so it's a misrepresentation of his teachings. You have the denial of biblical authority. Um, it claims it's not always accurate. It's not always right. It's rarely God's word. It's it's not an errant. Um, it contradicts Orthodox Christian beliefs in in divine inspiration and the authority of the Bible and so on and so forth. Um, you have certainly relativism and a railing against absolute truth taking place. It implies that truth is absolutely relative or definitely relative, which is kind of an oxymoron. Truth is relative and can be found in all phases and philosophies equally. Well, not equally. Not equally. That's not true. Um, so that contradicts Orthodox Christian belief. Um, in absolute truth as revealed through Christ and also through the scriptures. We also have syncretism taking place here as a theological fallacy. What it does is promoting the blending of elements from various religions and philosophies all into one, right? While ignoring the scripture, you can't, you can't bring the ancient one in though. It has to be every other philosophy uh, or, you know, whatever other, what every other nation saying or every other faith, but not, not the ancient one that we've inherited. So fallacious. Um, and so, man, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. And uh, I'm sure you can pick up on some of this uh, as, you know, you watch yourself. But I always think it's good to uh, watch these kind of things and, and try to poke the holes in them and identify what's going on. So, all right, friends, I am going to stop there and say I hope that helps. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glowsahouse.com today. Glow's House, language resources for the global community.